When U.S. President Donald Trump started the trade war on China in 2018, he vowed to press China to cut its trade deficit with the U.S. The surplus did fall in 2019, but in 2020 it rose to 2018's level again. Meanwhile, various studies found the trade war has cost the U.S. hundreds of thousands of jobs and eroded its GDP. Now, almost two years on, is the U.S. winning the trade war? If not, why? Joining me for the discussion via Skype from uh, Phnom Penh, Cambodia, is Digby James Wren, visiting research scholar at Deakin University, and from New Jersey, Jack Pakalski of the consulting company JFP Holdings. Gentlemen, welcome to the point. So, as I mentioned, um, various studies, including this one from September 2019 by Moody's Analytics, found that the trade war had actually costed the U.S. economy by then nearly 300,000 jobs and an estimated 0.3 percent, or some other study put the cost to 0.7% um, of the GDP and uh, um, a more recent research by the Federal Reserve Bank of uh, New York Time, uh, by the Re Federal Reserve Bank of New York and Columbia University found that U.S. company lost at least 1.7 trillion in the price of their stocks as a result of U.S. tariffs imposed on imports from China. Jack, um, from your observation, <clears throat> how has the trade war affected business such as yours and uh, um, who has been hardest hit by the trade war? Well, obviously, companies that are importing from China or exporting from China or importing into the United States from China have been uh, have been hit. Uh, for example, in the automotive components area, you know, we know that uh, you know that that's been a, a factor because of the 25 percent tariffs on parts going into into the United States. But uh, you know, there are all kinds of studies which show different economic impacts. But the fact of the matter is that kind of going into uh, this year, the, Uni the United States economy, even after two years of a trade war, was stronger than ever. Unemployment was down, the economy was growing, and the stock market was a record high. So it, it's kind of hard to kind of to, 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 to pull out different factors and, and say that the trade war had this or that impact on the overall economy. Well, some of the numbers that we have seen, however, did indicate that, uh, for instance, uh, many U.S. companies are primarily paying for the tariffs with a cost estimated, for instance, this study saying at 46 billion U.S. dollars, and because the tariffs for U.S. companies to accept lowering profit margin, cut wages or jobs for workers, and uh, defer potential wage hikes or expansions. And uh, a spokesperson for the American Farm Bureau also stated that farmers have lost the vast majority of what was once a 24 billion U.S. dollar market in China. Um, so. Exactly. Can we get a clearer picture of what the trade war on China has costed the United States? Jack. Well, you know, again, I think it's difficult to uh, to really to really pinpoint it because, as I said, all the other economic uh, metrics were, you know, were very good. So it's hard to say that the trade war had this or that impact. I mean, agricultural products are basically a global commodity. And so if you don't get uh, sales into one particular country, it's going to be taken up some, you know, somewhere else. So I'm not sure that I would agree with the analysis of, 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 the, of the U.S. farmers losing, uh, you know, losing a market. The other factor is that it really depends very much on the product as to who pays for it. So, for example, in some products, uh, you know, where it can't be sourced anywhere else, basically that price is passed along to the consumers. In other products that maybe can be sourced from other markets, uh, basically, uh, you know, they can't be sourced, and so then profit margins suffer. So, you know, I think it's a, a much more complicated picture to, you know, to try to get a, um, a you know, you, you know, to try to analyze yeah. and just pulling out, a, you know, a couple different numbers. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look at the trade situation between the two sides, though, because th that's where President Trump was uh, explicitly, um, you know, saying that he was going after, for instance, that the surplus between the two sides is too lopsided. So, but if you look at the, the past two years, how the trajectory of the trade surplus between the two countries has uh, uh, been developing, for instance, 
2018, the sub China's trade surplus was around 320 billion, and then 2019 that was down to 290 billion U.S. dollars. But uh, uh, the first 11 months of 2020, the trade surplus with the U.S. is uh, again around 306 billion U.S. dollars, an increase of 6.8 percent. And if you look at the trade volume between the two sides, uh, a very similar picture. 2018 was much higher, and then in 2019 it took a hit. But for 2020, for the first 11 months of this year, trade um, in goods we're talking about went up again. So, yeah, these numbers come from the Commerce Department of China, and uh, the United States might have a different right. way of calculating everything. But it seen, but the overall trend should not change so much. So, um, uh, you know, if you look at the goals President Trump set out to achieve, you know, the trade surplus. And the, 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 the decoupling possibly between the two sides or less trade between the two sides, he definitely did not achieve anything on those fronts. Jack, you want to continue? Yeah, so, so first of all, I'd say that uh, you know, the trade war is really, you know, was used as an instrument, but I think there were broader issues involved. Apart from the, the, uh, you know, the trade surplus that China has with the United States, I mean, frankly, I never thought that was really the real issue. Both countries, or the two countries combined, account for 40 percent of global GDP, and both countries are growing. So in that scenario, you, you would expect and you would hope the trade would grow between the two countries. So I never really thought that was the issue. The bigger issue in terms of the United States was the whole intellectual property issue. And, and you know, you talk about various impacts on U.S. companies. The U.S. trade representative estimated that the U.S. companies were losing about $600 billion a year to intellectual property, uh, you know, issues. And so I think the, you know, the trade war, you know, what we refer to as the trade war was really about a much broader, uh, you know, set of, of right. issues. And I think IP was a, uh, a very big part of it. You know, the one thing, I, I did look very closely at the Phase One agreement. And I thought it was very constructive because it set up a very good mechanism for the two sides to talk about issues like trade, IP, and so forth. So, you know, hopefully that will continue. Well, President Trump did say the trade war was easy to win. So, easy to win. So, my question was really, you know, um, two years into the trade war, has the United States won? Uh, at least the object, objectives that he set out. Uh, Dickby, let me get your assessment of the situation. First of all, has the U.S. at least made, you know, um, temporary victory or progress in its trade war on China? And how do you look at the trade numbers, including volume of trade and surplus? Well, the first thing to say is that the Republicans historically are always the political party of tariffs. I mean, they really like tariffs. And the other thing that they tend to do, the Republicans tend to do, is they subordinate trade policy to foreign policy objectives. And this is historically true. They've always done this. Uh, the difference with Donald Trump is that he has really un, you know, used this in an unprecedented fashion to, to the point that you know, it's, it's belligerent. Um, and that's very much, you know, as he said, a whole of government approach to doing this. Um, so the short answer is really that they have failed in their objectives and the reason they've failed of course is because it doesn't deliver export gains, it doesn't deliver rising incomes for Americans, it doesn't deliver greater manufacturing, uh, it, it hasn't done any of those things. Uh, what it has done of course is upset all of the trading partners and uh, specifically China and at the same time what those tariffs tend to do is they they only target areas that are high value add. They don't target areas where it's fairly inexpensive, fairly cheap and easily done. And China's is very strong in that area. Uh, and so that hasn't been affected at all. So, of course, the, the volume of trade has increased uh, in those areas. It hasn't increased in, in the really high end. Of course, that's where it's been affected the most. Uh, you know, TikTok, Huawei, all that sort of thing. Um, so... Uh, Look, he's made errors, and uh, of course the government is subsidizing, the U.S. government is subsidizing their farmers, and that's unusual because American agricultural products have always been really competitive, 
and this is, you know, it's really unusual that they should have to pay such large, the government pays such large subsidies to its farmers. And of course, inside the WTO, that would be a, a problem as well. Yeah. Let, um, me, so let me bring in Jack. Let me bring in Jack because Jack seems to, although his personal business is suffering, Jack, uh, I hope I'm putting it right, although your personal business is suffering, uh, I understand, because of the tariff and the trade war. Uh, you seem to think that uh, you know the trade war might have actually um, paving the way for the U.S. to achieve its strategic goals. Look, I think the trade war, what we call the trade war, was really President Trump's way of taking a time out and saying, "Look, we've had 20 years of, of, of you know growth in both countries, but there are, there are issues between the two countries." none of which were ever being addressed by any prior administration, including the Republican administrations. And so the trade war was really a mechanism for getting the two countries to discuss very serious issues. And I think that the positive outcome is, was this phase one agreement, which set up a very good quarterly mechanism for both countries, for the leaders of both countries to sit down and talk about the key issues that were impacting both countries. That's the first time that kind of mechanism was ever put in place. And so I think that alone was okay. a very positive outcome All right. of, the, uh, of what we call the trade war. Okay, Dickby, your take quickly, please. Well, yeah, look, I think, you know, as I said, the Republicans historically subordinate their trade policy to foreign policy. And so as long as those foreign policy objectives are not friendly uh, towards China, of course there's going to be trade friction and they're going to do as much of it as they can. I don't think, uh, I, look I agree with the idea that this, this phase one deal was the first time they've uh, negotiated on this way and perhaps that indicates that some kind of a grand bargain can be done in the future. But I think that's going to take quite a long time to set up. It could take four years for example, uh, you know, it might be 2024 before you even see a glimmer of that. But um, uh, Biden's got a huge challenge here to, to undo all of the damage that's been done. Uh, I, and, you know, look, the Americans, what do they really want out of all of this? I think IP protection is good, but let's, let's look at what the, the reforms that China's introducing. They're introducing incremental reforms, they're testing them, and then they put them right across the board for the whole country. So it's happening slowly but surely. And, you know, don't forget, China is still a developing economy just because it's really large does not mean that it's a developed economy, fully developed economy yet. Well, it's really a deep topic and we only have so much time to cover so much ground. Uh, but one show at a time, we'll talk about these important issues. Many thanks to my two guests, uh, Digby James Wren, joining us from uh, Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and uh, Jack Pod uh, joining, uh, Pekulski, I'm sorry, joining us from the United States.